In a departure from its recent trend of processing power fragmentation, Apple is set to introduce a new generation of a series chipsets for the iPhone 16 lineup. For instance, the iPhone 15 utilizes the processor from the iPhone 14 Pro, while the iPhone 15 Pro boasts the more advanced Apple A17 Pro chipset. In contrast, both the iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pro will feature Apple's cutting-edge A18 series processors, crafted using TSMC's next-generation 3NAND technology. This shift comes as Apple prepares for one of its most significant software overhauls in a decade, which will also influence the capabilities of its upcoming A18 processors. With the iPhone 16 lineup expected to launch on September 9, fresh details about their system on chips have surfaced. Initially, it was rumored that the standard models would be equipped with an A18, while the Pro versions would receive an A18 Pro. If a leak from Weibo's fixed focus digital holds true, the distinctions between the two may not be substantial. The standard Apple A18 is anticipated to feature a 6 core CPU, comprising two performance and four efficiency cores, and a 5 core GPU, whereas the A18 Pro will share the same CPU configuration but will include a 6 core GPU. The A18 Pro is expected to reach boost speeds of up to 4.05, surpassing the A17 Pro's 3.8 GHz boost clock. The leaker claims that Apple attempted to push the A18 to an impressive 4.95 GHz but had to dial it back due to excessive power consumption. This assertion seems somewhat implausible, as achieving such speeds in a smartphone chipset is nearly impossible, even with TSMC's advanced N3e node. Unlike previous generations where non-pro iPhones were often left with outdated hardware, this time the gap will be narrower, likely to ensure the seamless operation of Apple intelligence features. An increase in RAM may also be on the horizon, as on-device AI processing typically demands significant memory resources. The sudden burst of artificial intelligence, everything in phones by the competition, are forcing it to catch up and introduce even more powerful machine learning coprocessor in the Apple A18 chipset. Also, if Apple wants to keep its renowned focus on user privacy and security, it will have to do the bulk of processing for basic AI tasks on the iPhone itself, so the A18 chip will have to take that into its new features equation as well. While Apple is accounting for all that, it may still segregate the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro by processing power, just within the realms of the new Apple A18 envelope. Meanwhile, Apple is gearing up to unveil the iPhone 16 Pro Max in an exciting new hue, reportedly named Desert Titanium. While there were initial rumors suggesting a goldish shade, a recently leaked hands-on video indicates that the color leans more towards brown. It's likely that what we're seeing is just a dummy model rather than the final product, but it does align with previously circulated real-life images. The color palette for the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max will feature titanium as the theme, with anticipated options including titanium white, black, gray, and gold. The intriguing question remains, what will this standout color be officially called? Speculation points to either desert or gold, and there have even been whispers of a rose variant, typically associated with a pink tone. However, we may have to wait until the event on September 9 to get the definitive answer. Now for those of you excited for the Apple iPhone 16 series, we're now going to run through the full specs design and the pricing for each model in the range to help you guys decide which one is right for you. For my regular viewers, you guys have seen this, so just skip to the next video. But if you're new here then hit subscribe now, and we'll get right into it. So first up we have the standard iPhone 16. With the standard iPhone 16, we get a 6.3 inch OLED display but unfortunately, this is still going to be an LTPS display. The iPhone 16 is going to have a taller aspect ratio than last year, and it's going to be protected by Ceramic Shield 2. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixels selfie camera and Face ID sensors. Then on the rear we've got a 48 megapixels primary camera and a 12 megapixels ultrawide. It's powered by the A18 chipset, and it's likely coming with 6 gigs of RAM and up to 512 gigs of storage. It's also powered up by a 3561 mAh battery, with 30 watts fast charging, and it's going to come with advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. Now, it will of course ship with iOS 18, and it's expected to launch from around $850 in September 2024. Now next up, we've got the iPhone 16 Plus. With the iPhone 16 Plus, 
we get a 6.9 in OLED display, and again, unfortunately, this is another LTPS display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor, and it's protected by ceramic shield too. We get the new dynamic island, which covers up the 12 megapixels, selfie cameras, and face ID sensors. Then on the rear, we've got a 48 megapixels primary camera and a 12 megapixels ultra wide. It's powered by the A18 chipset, and it's likely going to come with a choice of 6 gigs of RAM and up to 512 gigs of storage. It's powered by a 4,006 mAh battery with 30 watts fast charging, and it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. Now, of course, it ships with iOS 18, and it's expected to launch for around $950 in September 2024. Next up, we got the iPhone 16 Pro. Now the iPhone 16 Pro has a 6.3 in 120 Hz LTPO OLED display. It's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor, and the Pro is protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the new Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixels selfie camera and face ID sensors. Then on the rear, we get a 48 megapixels primary camera, a 48 megapixels ultra wide camera, then we've got a 12 megapixels Tetra Prism camera with 5 times optical zoom. It's powered up by the A18 Pro chipset, and it comes with 8 gigs of RAM and up to 1 terabyte of storage and it's also powered by a 3577 million power battery, and fast charging is still unknown at the moment, but we do expect some improvements. And of course, it comes with the advanced 5G, Bluetooth 5.3, and Wi-Fi 7. It will of course ship with iOS 18, and it's expected to launch from around $1,100 in September 2024. Now finally, we save the best to last the iPhone 16 Pro Max. With the iPhone 16 Pro Max, we get a 6.9 inch 120 Hz LTPO OLED display. Again, like the other phones, it's got a taller aspect ratio than its predecessor, and it's protected by Ceramic Shield 3. We get the Dynamic Island, which covers up the 12 megapixels, selfie cameras, and face ID sensors. Then on the rear, we've got a 48 megapixels primary camera, a 48 megapixels ultra wide, and a 12 megapixels Tetra Prism camera with 5 times optical zoom. It's powered up by the 18 Pro chipset. It comes with 8 gigs of RAM and up to 1 terabyte of storage, and it's powered up by a 4676 milliamp hour battery. As with the 16 Pro, we don't know the fast charging at the moment, but we do expect to see some improvements. Now it comes up with the advanced 5G. Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 7, and it will of course ship with iOS 18, and this one's expected to launch around $1,300 in September 24. So overall, the iPhone 16 series is looking like a great addition to the iPhone lineup. More things remain similar, there are still plenty of upgrades with the new hardware to power it better and brighter displays. Along with the new battery thermal technology, this should really enhance the experience and work well with the new A features. Now, of course, because of all the similarities to its predecessor, is probably not going to make anyone with an iPhone 15 rush for an upgrade, but for anyone with an older iPhone or looking to get their first iPhone, that it's going to be a great choice. Now, of course, as we approach the launch, more and more information is going to continue to come in, and I'll be sharing it as soon as it does, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing in the future.